Scott Arnold was once an award-winning skier with hopes of Olympic glory. But Scott's plans were derailed, and he ended up, horrible to think of, eating and living out of dumpsters for years. Well, my name is Scott Arnold, and I used to be a dumpster diver. I had to survive, and the only way I knew how was to get food out of dumpsters and to live out of them. For years, Scott Arnold spent his days wandering around in the scorching Arizona sun, rummaging through dumpsters and sleeping in alleys and ravines. It was a far cry from the life Scott thought he'd have when he was a boy. I aspire to, uh, to greatness, to um, having a life of um, winning, of being successful, of traveling the world and representing my country as, you know, a, a gold medalist in the Olympics. You know, those were things that were spoken into my life at a young age that I really believed uh, were achievable for me. Scott hoped to be an Olympic ski racer. He'd trained with the Swiss national ski team and even won the Vail Cup in Colorado. Skiing was his life. But when Scott's parents' business took a hit and they couldn't afford his training anymore, he was pulled from the sport and put into a private high school. Scott's parents thought this would set him on track towards college and a successful future, but it didn't. When I didn't have skiing to, uh, to be my center of my life, I started to flounder. On the slopes, Scott had only spent three or four hours in school each day. Now he was expected to excel alongside Harvard and Notre Dame hopefuls. I never measured up. I wasn't as intelligent as the rest of the, uh, the, my classmates. The fear of failure in my life really began to set in and grab a hold of me. So Scott turned to alcohol to escape his insecurities. I was not your average drinker. I was a tore up from the floor up drunk and I was the last one to leave a party. I never could stop. There was never one or two for me. There was always a dozen or more. And then there were the drugs. Sometimes it was marijuana, sometimes cocaine or LSD. And over time, he started using prescription drugs. Uh, Percocets, Vicodin, Hydrocodone. It kept me numb. Especially, it helped remove, erase the guilt that I had. The guilt of multiple DUIs, near-death accidents, a broken marriage, and the disappointment he brought to his parents. He tried to stop drinking and using drugs many times, and even went to Wyoming to rekindle his dream of being an Olympic skier. But of course, drugs and alcohol always got in the way. I always kept getting lured back into that, that, that thought that I could drink or drug just a little bit, and it never worked. I was absolutely like an animal. I, I wasn't like a human being. What finally broke the cycle was an encounter in the county jail. It was after years of living outside. I had mental uh, problems. I, I, was, I was talking to myself all the time. I was the most depressed human on the face of the planet. I felt like I was dying. And I went out into where they had the uh, jailhouse library. They push it around on a cart. And there was a Bible on that cart. And it had, uh, it was a Bible about breaking the chains in your life. I cried out to Jesus Christ desperately and I got on my hands and knees and I begged him to come into my life. As soon as I cried out to God like that, like I meant it, my heart changed. It was like a switch went on. I felt love. I felt the love of Jesus Christ replace every need that I ever had to use drugs and alcohol. I didn't have to be perfect anymore because only he is perfect. And he began to speak to me clearly. I heard the voice of God saying, read your Bible. After his release, Scott went through intense counseling and Bible study. Today, he says he has freedom and true success. He's married, has a home and a family, and works for a rehabilitation center where he helps others out of the lifestyle he once lived. I look back at those dumpsters and those places where I used to smoke crack and drink and it's like a dream. It's like a nightmare that used to happen in my life. I, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with the incredible power and the grace and mercy of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
But the most important thing that I could ever tell anybody is that obedience to Jesus Christ and his word is the key that unlocks every stronghold that Satan tries to hold on us. That anybody who believes that they can find any fulfillment outside of Jesus Christ is lost because there's no other way to heaven but through the name of Jesus Christ. God is real. Jesus Christ is the answer.